I was born in Perth in 1939 and brought up on a wheat belt farm 20 miles east of Coolan. First years of school were by correspondence as there was no bus going as far as our property. After the first two years I stayed with my uncle and auntie on another farm we had close to Coolan and travelled by bus to Coolan Primary. In 1950 I went to attend Albany High School, boarding for two years at the CWA Boys Hostel at the base of Dog Rock, then later travelling by bus from our new farm in King River. In 1956 I joined the RAF as an apprentice for full-time engineering study at Melbourne Technical College, now of course the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. Our first chief engineer, Graham Davey, was a lecturer there. In early 1958 I was discharged and returned to Perth to complete my engineering at Perth Technical College. This included about three months practical with the PMG in Kalgoorlie. In December 59, the then Chief Engineer Graham Davey employed me as an engineer at Channel 7 and I stayed until 1975. Over these 15 years of major changes and development for the company, I will mention some of the significant and ordinary memories, occurrences and changes to facilities and equipment that occurred. An early memory of Channel 7, part of the culture, was the ritual gathering of the engineering crew behind the master control desk when we heard the uh, music for the introduction to Crusader Rabbit, a filler, prior to the news each night. <laughs> began down in the Caribbean, the day Crusader and his pal Rags the Tiger rescued many of the Merbunny from Black Bilge the Pirate. Crusader, you see, had been forced to disguise himself as a candlestick in order to avoid discovery, and thus he overheard Captain Bilge and his evil parrot Garlic plotting to steal every piece of silverware in New York City. And flick, off goes Crusader. After the news, engineering, production and news staff adjourned to the John Barleycorn, which is the local host, Dave Chalmers, for a few jars. Early weeks at Channel 7 saw me learning about the equipment and operation of Telecine. Later I was involved with microwave link maintenance, including dish alignments. This was my introduction to a new world, The most had little or no experience with actual TV equipment or its operation and only few were technically trained in radio and electronics. There was the opportunity for all of us to learn and progress without waiting for the veterans to retire. Some of my recollections and things that have guided me in general over those 15 years of change included some wise advice from my physics lecturer. You may not remember anything of what I say, but if I teach you how to think, I will have done more than I could possibly hope to and much later an interview with Dick Smith covering his staff and management said in essence if my managers make mistakes I watch them and reward them if they make the same mistake twice I fire them explaining that if they don't make mistakes they are not making decisions and are not contributing to the organization if they repeat the mistakes they are not learning from their mistakes hiring and firing was a large part of my concern and with few exceptions I found more success by employing people without a job and asking them do you want a job are you prepared to work then saying we have many opportunities here and by starting on probation we will be able to see what you can want can and want to do few left and most formed the real backbone of our team of operators and technical people some of whom are here tonight the role of chief engineer in my time was to look after systems and facilities planning, staff management with an emphasis on interdepartmental diplomacy. I had an engineering and technical team who had the experience and ability to cover most normal situations. This often left the unusual or different tasks for me to do. These included building related planning, 
air conditioning plant, diesel generators, carbon dioxide fire protection, the microwave equipment and path surveys, and even the PABX rotary switches which had several problems. Most satisfying were the individual projects we were able to plan and carry out. Many of these will be mentioned during this presentation. The investigations of translators, cable and microwave for country TV occupied a lot of time, including trips to the Midwest of America, where we looked at translators in the Rocky Mountains and the Tri-State area. In New York, there were visits to the TV stations and a look at the cable used for closed-circuit television and in schools, especially as a learning age for underprivileged children.